Subaru SVX Motor Trend stated, Can't use enough superlatives to describe this car. Popular mechanics proclaim, It thinks it's a BMW, only better. Automotive Industries wrote, Our unanimous choice is this year's purest engineering effort. And as Bob Pullman of me in Wisconsin so eloquently expressed, Go to a Subaru dealer and get a good quote yourself on an SVX today. Subaru. What to drive. Jeez, how 90s was that? I don't know if I want to go home and, I don't know, open a bottle of wine, dust off a box set of Frasier, put my feet up, or go buy a Subaru SVX. Somewhat hilariously, I think there's a very good chance that today you might end up doing both. So stay tuned and please do subscribe. I've got some books to give away, but I do need some new subscribers to be desperate. So please subscribe. Thanks, guys. Now, those of you who watched the very first episode will know that I'm on the lookout for a more modern daily classic something that I can drive every day something that's not too precious uh, but still you know unique enough to to keep my interest and I'm still seriously considering that Audi RS6 I'm probably going to go to drive it again very soon but in recent days a Subaru SVX has crept into contention and that's where I'm going now to Somerset West to go drive that now, like in the first episode, I'm driving something modern on the way there, and I'll tell you about that car now, and then when we get to the old car, we'll switch to that. Now, we've got a problem this week because this car has a voice-activated assistance system, which comes into play every time I mention the car's name. So I'm going to say Mbenz. Should give you an idea what I'm driving. So this is the Mbenz GLS 400D. Um, it's a big luxury seven-seater SUV uh, it competes with the BMW X7 and that's kind of where Ms. Mbenz sorry almost that was close where Mbenz says uh, the, the rivals in but I think in South Africa there's another rival and that's the Toyota Land Cruiser 300 the, the new one price wise for this GLS 400D compared with a 3 liter D uh, X7 compared with a top 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 spec Land Cruiser pretty much the same money power and torque figures are all compar to comparable so um, yeah I'm gonna try and figure out for you which one you should pick if a big luxurious seven seat SUV is what you want now let's let's uh, I think contextualize it like like this first the GLS is supposedly the S class of the Mbenz off-roaders and that means it is the ultimate um, it's supposed to give you S class on-road comfort and all the tech and then the G-Wagon's off-road ability and I think that's kind of pointless because Specifically in this one spec, this GLS 400D, it's riding on 22-inch road wheels and it's got the, the uh, AMG sort of style kit on it. Nobody's going to take this off-road, so I'm not feeling, uh, I'm not feeling like, like I'm cheating by say, you know, when I say I'm not taking this off-road. I have taken it on a gravel road and it coped fine, and I think that's probably as much as most people are going to do with this anyway. So. I think that point is quite moot so that brings us back to the interior on road very comfortable I've done almost a thousand kilometers in this car in the last two days on the one uh, return trip where I was alone in the car and I didn't have kids wanting to go to the toilet every five minutes uh, I did this trip in one go without stopping very comfortable but that's mostly down to the seats and all the luxury fittings the ride is actually pretty it's so so it's 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 obviously rides on air um, but yeah it, there's a little bit of road noise coming through it trembles a little bit on some of the poorest surfaces and I actually think on road the BMW X7 is the superior vehicle if you are gonna take your luxury seven-seater 
off-roader off-road like it properly then there's just no question what you need to buy it's the Toyota Land Cruiser and you know this particular brand and BMW and Audi and the likes might not consider Toyota a premium player in this market but just look at how many Land Cruisers they sell that's a serious competitor and I think if you are the, going to take your 2 million rand off-road or off-road and put camping gear on it and throw dirty things in the boot and the dog's going to jump in there and there's going to be like wetsuits and stuff buy a Land Cruiser and this, this, is, this is not I think or the X7 not really the car that, that you should be looking at all that said um, there are some really nice uh, um, features in this car the one that I don't like we won't talk about because that's going to bring up a, a voice assistant system which is very annoying but you can of course switch that off or, or, or turn it on or make it less intrusive or just change the name I think but um, if you come into this car cold you know without any prior knowledge of the car you will be stunned by this cabin it really is a lovely lovely place to be beautiful infographic displays big big flat screens uh, lovely surfaces satin silver finishes wood um, it, it really it, it's it, it's proper the only problem is though that we've seen it before it's from the GLE it's it's really very similar so you're buying the GLS the S class of Mercedes SUV so I'm just going over some rumble strips but you're getting the E-Class sort of style and that's probably still good enough because in isolation I would say this interior is the best of the three cars that I've mentioned so far um, it's really stylish so let's talk power and uh, fuel consumption for a little bit assume if you're buying the 400D uh, with an AMG kit on it like this one you like the look of the sporty you know 63 AMG but you um, don't particularly like what the AMG does at the fuel pumps so yeah Benz claims quite a low average consumption figure of around 8 liters per hundred for this vehicle which I don't know um, you'll have to be very very light-footed to get that figure and sort of trundle around and, and, and coast a lot I think a far more um, realistic real-world figure is probably over 11 I would say liters per hundred performance wise so this is this is 243 kilowatts from its uh, I think 3.2 liter sorry no 2.9 liter uh, turbocharged six-cylinder engine and it's got 700 newton meters torque now that's um, more power than both the BMW and the Toyota so it is faster whether it's more economical in the real world I, I, I can't really say but I, I, I will say this it's a lovely touring vehicle um, you know with so once it gets up to sort of cruising speed and it settles and it's got lots of overtaking grunt, overtaking grunt. I can just imagine with a caravan or a boat or whatever. Really great family vehicle in that regard. Uh, this generation GLS is also, it's it's fairly, it, it's grown significantly between the axles. So so the wheelbase is longer, and and so occupant space is really good. Rear legroom is fantastic. Um, I sit behind myself very comfortably in this car with a lot of knee, knee room still left and then the third row is still usable as well and if you put and, it, and if you travel in this sort of what I would imagine is the most commonly used five five seater configuration where the two rear seats folded down to make the boot bigger you've got such a big boot as well what I really like is that you can stand behind the car and with a flick of a few switches you can fold all the second and the third row seats completely flat and when I say flat I mean completely flat it's flat flat you can you can throw a mattress in there and, and, and camp in this car and you can raise them electronically again so it takes a lot of sort of the 
hard work out of you know glamping i guess um what else do i like oh yes it's got a very clever electrically folding um, tow bar uh, it took me a while to find it it's it's sort of hidden on the on the on the edge of the of the tailgate but it's there and it and it works very well obviously this car's got full 360 camera system um, something I really like is the and, and, and the kids like as well um, and me I'm just a big kid the changing LED ambient lighting in, and it's a, like on a little wheel that you just sort of turn with, with your finger you just sort of turn it and you change the, the ambient color in the car and it um, it really works very nicely so in summary then the uh, Benz GLS 400D is very comfortable loaded with tech very spacious and it's got really usable and and well thought out um, sort of loading configuration um, systems uh, the engine is is powerful enough not terribly efficient but also not too bad um, the ride is, is is good once it's up to speed but it, it is a bit lumpy and um, you know struggles with the bigger bumps so as you can probably here by now this is a car that's kind of about compromise and I, and I think you were never going to get away from that what we say what Benz tried to do here is to give you as I said an S-Class on-road experience and a G-Wagon off-road experience and, and those are two very polar opposite experiences and and they've they've done well don't get me wrong they've done well but it, it's not perfect on, on, on both on either side of the spectrum the BMW X7 is better on the road and the Toyota Land Cruiser I'm willing to bet everything I have on it will be better off-road so if if you have very clearly um, distinguished purchasing considerations then I think it's a very simple way you need to buy if you don't I think this car actually does offer the best compromise of an on slash off-road luxury seven seater and if you're a fan of the Benz brand even better so yeah not without merit I would probably give it a, a compromised seven out of a ten now about that Subaru SV8 the Subaru SVX was first shown as a concept designed by Giugiaro in 1989, went into production late in 1991 and was tested by Car Magazine South Africa in January 1994. It cost a staggering 325,000 Rand back then. Right, the big moment is imminent. Um, the gentleman who is taking care of this vehicle for the owner is bringing it to the sh shopping mall parking area and um, yeah I'll meet him here now you know I've I don't think I've ever sat in a Subaru SVX in my life um, and and I've built it up as as a bit of a Euro car for me so I really hope I'm not disappointed um, also a bit different you know because I'm, I'm not just driving it for the sake of ticking it off as something that I've driven I am driving it because I am considering buying it so um, sure quite nervous actually um, you know this car is is incredibly rare and it's also to me uh, very attractive and 
because nobody in South Africa really knows about it nobody really wants it and for that reason the price is very reasonable and so I really want this car to be good so that I can buy it we'll see shortly and there she is finally this car has been standing outside uh, for more than a few months so yeah it's not exactly in the kind of condition that you would find a car at a dealership so you have to get your head around that but yeah you you can't get away from the fact that this is such a unique shape i mean Jujara really i don't know how he convinced the subaru um, execs who typically are fairly conservative when it comes to design to sign this one off for production and um yeah, it's going to take some uh, some cash to get this back to showroom condition, but just look at that. I mean, it's it's all there. It's it's uh, it's a very solid foundation to start with. So, in my life, I've only seen I think three Subaru SVXs. Two of them burgundy red, and this one pearlescent white one which I believe is the same one that was tested by Car Magazine back in 1994. Its trademark feature, these window within windows. Um, the reason for which I don't think anybody knows. It's so weird. The Subaru SVX was powered by Subaru's very first six cylinder flat six engine. It was a 3.3 liter and it punched out 169 kilowatt, which was quite reasonable for the time but remember the car weighed like 1.6 tons so the performance was uh, not too extravagant as I said I do need usable boot space for the school run so let's have a look Yeah, school bags will fit in there. Okay, so first drive in the Subaru SVX. Lovely smooth flat six. Electric six, sorry. A low car. Huh? Right. So the SVX was Subaru's uh, mid '90s luxury sports tourer. Not a, not quite a sports car. Um, not quite a luxury car. Sort of a mix of the two. Um, and very much aimed at the American market. I think only seven thousand were made for the right hand drive market of the world and South Africa probably got fewer than 20 some people say fewer than 10 of those and it's very possible that this very car was the one used uh, by car magazine for its road test in January 1994 so it had Subaru's first um, flat 6 engine but it was by no means a sports car fast uh, car magazine tested it at, at just under 10 seconds 0 to 100 and i think the top speed was around 220 so it's fast enough but but certainly not a sports car it is very quirky but though everything is weird uh, the window in the window it's probably its most uh, specific characteristic it's got all the luxuries, eh? cruise control, climate control. Electric seat adjustment. It still feels very solid mechanically. So this being a Subaru, it is of course uh, all-wheel drive, symmetrical all-wheel drive. 
And now that the window is open, you can probably hear the engine a bit better as well. It does have a nice raspiness to it. It's so weird to drive a car for the first time in your life that you also intend buying. You have nothing to compare it to. Makes it quite tricky. So the cabin insulation is very good. Once the windows are closed, it's very quiet inside. It is very weird in your peripheral vision to have this black piece of trim right there all the time. So yeah, I never meet you here as they say, but I must say this is not, um, I'm not disappointed. Definitely work to be to be done, but that was also to be expected, and I was told that beforehand. But it's comfortable, and once all the electronics work, will work. I think you know if the aircon works, if the radio works, if it's reliable. This will be a very, very, very nice daily. Um, I don't think it'll take too much to bring her back to to a former luster. works in here. It has the most spotless, spotless roof lining that I did not expect. Is it sagging a bit in the back there? That's the design. So that was most interesting. Um, like I said earlier, it's it's really hard when you don't know what to expect, and particularly so when um, you know you're also you, you, you're not only driving a car for the first time for the experience, but to potentially buy it. So the fact that it wasn't, um, I guess, in in, in like you, you know in in the, in the kind of condition that you would find it at a dealership, all polished and, and neat, on you know standing on the floor. I guess does have a um, have an impact on the first impression but from what I can see the body work you know there are one or two little rust spots and and, um, and, and and the luster of the paint that that needs to be corrected but it seems all solid um, I'm not too concerned about the exterior of the car. I think it can be brought back to, to really good kind of condition quite, quite easily and quite cheaply actually. Um, inside is, is more of a... Con I'm a little bit more confused inside because the suede part of it, which is what I was really worried about, is actually very good. The roof lining is good, it's sagging in a few places, but that's easily fixable. The, there's a, l a minor little scuff mark on the, on, on the suede on the driver's side door pa panel. The electric windows all work. Um, it, you know, everything is there, but there are things that are not working, like the air conditioning. The radio, I couldn't open the flap to even see what was in there and I would really like to, to put the original radio back in there, so I hope he's got that. Uh, in terms of the drive, yeah, I can't really say that, that there's anything that was alarming to me. It, it, the steering is a little bit off-center and there's a slight shudder on the brakes, but again, I mean, the car's been standing for a long time. Um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that the car is robust mechanically. And that cosmetically I can bring it back to to really you know a good looking SVX. The big question is how much is that going to cost on top of buying the car because the price of the car itself is not really set in stone either because um, uh, you know what is the market price for SVX? There isn't really a it's, it's what somebody's willing to pay for it and on top of that I will have to pay um, you know to get the car back into into shape so I'm not the kind of guy that likes to to lowball people and, and, and steal cars from them it's not my style 
Um, but I do think that it needs to be kept in mind, especially because um, there's a lot of unknowns, I think, based, based on this first experience. But yeah, um, I like the car. Ideally, I would like to make the deal happen. And um, it, it, it'll, it'll take, a, take a while to get it back to, to where I would be happy with it. Or it might not. Um, you know, the, the clip that's proving to be the problem with the radio cover might be a, a 10 rand fix. Uh, the aircon, I don't know. And um, I think most importantly to me, the engine runs beautifully smoothly perfectly the gearbox feels good the ride is firm but it feels it, it, it feels good it, it, it feels settled on the road it's not jittery uh, it feels like a well-built car and a, and a, and a cared for car uh, so i hope uh, i can give it i really hope i can give it a a new home let's see what discussions with the uh, current owner brings to light